and welcome to another UC Today webinar. And I'm joined very kindly by Caroline and Caitlin from Bandwidth. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. It's really nice to, to have you on because we've got a really interesting topic today and I know it's, it's, one, it's an area of the industry that's, that's growing really fast and we're seeing a lot of traction around CPaaS, so Communication Platform as a Service, on, on our website. So I wanted to talk to you for this particular webinar about how, how CPaaS is, is changing or, or transforming enterprise organizations. So first of all, little, little dummies guide, not necessarily for me, but maybe for me a little bit. What, what is CPaaS? I'll take this one. So CPaaS stands for Communications Platforms as a Service. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of PaaS or, you know, as a service um, acronyms that you've probably heard floating around. <laughs> Essentially, that just means it's in the cloud. So when we're talking about CPaaS or Communications Platforms as a Service, you're talking about telecom functionality that you can access from the cloud. The, the cool thing about CPaaS in particular is that this allows developers and um, product folks, folks that aren't typically easily able to manipulate and work with telecom or communication functionality, the ability to do that via API and really create um, personalized custom experiences that they've never been able to create previously. So it's certainly an exciting time and has made it more accessible than ever to the average business. And, and Caitlin, that's the, that's the important bit, isn't it, in terms of APIs that, that Caroline mentioned, that application programming interface. It's being able to integrate those different communication methods into, into a business's processes and existing systems. Right, absolutely. It, it, makes, it makes communication just much more accessible. Um, if you were to, say, for example, be looking to start a new application, launch a startup, and you needed that telecom infrastructure, you needed telephony for your business, the cost of a VoIP engineer or a telecom engineer is exponentially higher um, than a developer. And the accessibility of that position is also um, you know, much lower. And so what the API platform allows you to do is really embed those services easily into your infrastructure. It's sort of acting as almost like that middleware layer of telecom that sort of sits on top of what you need to build and just accessible via developer and just much more um, nimble, able to manipulate, um, create different cool features without having to have that all of that infrastructure and all of that overhead cost of you know telecom engineers and telecom infrastructure. Yeah, because my, my next question was going to be, so w why are enterprise customers looking for CPaaS? But, but you've both touched on it a, a bit there in terms of traditionally or historically putting communication methods, whether that was voice or whether we're talking about messaging, there, there'd have been a huge amount of infrastructure required with on-premises based systems. And obviously, Caroline, that, that's radically different with CPaaS. Exactly. Um, you know, the average consumer is, is expecting to interact with businesses in a different way than they have before. Um, they're expecting to be notified by text message if they have an appointment, for example. Um, they're expecting to be able to find the person that they're looking to talk to um, when they call the business in an easier way, maybe even automatically connect to the right person within that contact center org. So the, the expectations of the average consumer are different than they used to be. And in order to meet those differences, um, you need the ability to sort of manipulate and create those custom experiences. And CPaaS and the APIs that go along with it really put the business in control. Um, they're really able to, to create those amazing wow moments that every business is looking to make. And, and Caitlin, you mentioned it before. In terms of Historically, as Caroline said, if you wanted to install a, a messaging communication platform and you wanted to integrate that within your business system, you would have had to have the expertise in-house effectively, wouldn't you, to help you manage that system and integrate it. And obviously, with, with the way CPaaS works and using those services from the cloud and, and APIs and SDKs, you, you don't necessarily have to have the, the, the resource in-house to manage those systems, as long as you've got someone who has some idea of uh, a, a basic idea of coding and how to integrate those. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's business process management, right? It's it's anything that you do within your business, repeatable. You can have an API if you can replace that process and 
with an API and then have humans sort of manage that API and manipulate that API. It just makes your business much more scalable, um, you know, much more reactive to the dynamic market. And so um, for startups, it's great because you don't have to have that overhead. But then for like legacy companies, for example, that have all of this telecom infrastructure that's sitting um, and they're moving and migrating to the cloud, you know, what a CPaaS platform for them could do is help them manage that cloud migration, right? It sits there and it allows them to have a smaller team that's managing sort of the number movement back and forth between cloud platforms and just better enabling the organization to, to stay reactive and focus on their core business, which oftentimes and most of the time is not telecom. Yeah, of course, you don't want them to have to be focusing on management of platforms. And that's a really good point, actually. We think of CPaaS being used by startups and everyone can think of the, you know, the really big examples of, uh, of Uber and that's Airbnb and that sort of thing and, and how they've used integration to, to radically transform an industry. But enterprises are, are looking and we hear the word digital transformation all the time, but, but it, CPaaS really can help in terms of them being able to look at aspects of their communication infrastructure or aspects that they, they're missing from their traditional infrastructure and integrate those from a CPaaS provider without having to, you know, radically transform or buy a load of infrastructure hardware. It's a very different model, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, it really opens the door to create those experiences, like with text messaging, for example. If you wanted to um, send around, you know, reminders or notifications via text, it's, it's super easy to do that. You just need some basic coding skills in order to get started. Um, and then even examples like um, moving your infrastructure to the cloud. Um, let's talk about moving like your Microsoft Teams environment. Maybe you're switching to a cloud provider and you want to be able to sort of ease that process. Some of the CPaaS tools can make that process super easy for you, giving you the flexibility to move back and forth, um, order numbers, keep them in the cloud, even porting numbers back and forth from provider to provider becomes easier with some of the tools that CPaaS providers like Bandwidth are offering up. Um, it, it's, it's more than just you know the, the, the Ubers and Lyfts of the world that you might think of. So obviously the, the CPaaS market is an emerging one and it is potentially going to be a hugely valuable one going forward. So, but there's, there's a lot of difference in different CPaaS platform providers, aren't there, in the industry at the moment? Yeah, so the, the nice thing about the CPaaS market is that you certainly don't have a limit with regards to your options. It is definitely proliferating, but in that sort of proliferation, you have specialization. So there have emerged kind of buckets of different, you know, CPaaS providers that sort of share like things. So bandwidth is a network owner. So we own our network. We have that network ownership. So you have the economies that go along with that. Um, and so we're we're very much the the power the power CPaaS provider. Um, we don't necessarily specialize in like modular content and get down deep into the application layer like some of the other CPaaS providers of the world. Um, I don't know, Caroline. If you want to jump in on that? It's sure. Yeah, you'll find the, that CPaaS providers have two main, I guess, spectrums. On one side, there's lots of bells and whistles. They make it really easy to get started to prototype something, maybe even build a fully built campaign with landing pages and emails and all sorts of channels. And on the other side, you have sort of specializations. Um, so where bandwidth sits, um, we own the network as well as the APIs. So a lot, of, some players in the space even have to work with a provider like us to access that core telephony functionality, like the ability to send messages, the ability to make calls. Um, so the fact that we can do that in-house sort of eliminates the middleman um, and it makes it really easy to scale. Um, but again, if you're looking for all the bells and whistles, the ability to get started super quickly, um, there are certainly players in this space that are um, ready enough to do that as well. So depending on, on what you might need and what you're looking to do, there's certainly a CPaaS player for you. Yeah, so I would just, I would advise buyers to, to Caroline's point, to just do a little bit of due diligence and to just see what your internal needs are. Look at how many developers you have. Look at the, the types of resources you have on deck to, to develop something custom in-house and understand the requirements and then look for a provider that will help you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I know that 
you guys at Bandwidth specialized in, in, in voice API and messaging APIs. Can you give me examples of how you helped some of your customers w w help them leverage some of the advantages from, from your CPaaS provision? Yeah, sure. Um, we have, so uh, Google is one of our, you know, flagship customers, and we sort of built out our c -Life network alongside Google. And if you're familiar with Google Voice, it's just a, I like this example because it's easy and intuitive. Um, when you go into Google Voice, say you download the application and you want to get a VoIP phone number, that way you're able to call in and out using the application, um, hitting maybe another Google Voice customer or potentially the PSTN, the Public Switch Telecom Network. Um, what happens on the back end is every time an user needs to request a number, Google has an API set up to dip down into their inventory of bandwidth phone numbers, immediately provision uh, via API and activate that number on the user's phone, and then use that uh, network to hop on to the bandwidth network and, and then traverse the, the PSTN accordingly. So all of that is done in real time uh, via the application, dipping down into our network and infrastructure using that API layer. Um, I like that example because it's, it's, if you've ever used Google Voice, it's just it's easy to understand. Um, but there's many other examples of really cool messaging stuff. Like, I don't know, Caroline, if you want to touch on the, the Rover example. That's sure. A, a nice one. Yeah, if you've ever uh, used Rover, it's sort of like the, uh, an on-demand app for pet sitters, dog walkers, any kind of pet need that you might have. Um, Rover uses messaging um, in order to connect you with your dog walker all through the app. Um, you don't have to actually log in in order to get the latest updates from your dog walker while you're away. Um, they'll send it to you via text message. Another quick example like that, um, we work with ZipRecruiter. They uh, use our messaging API to send out job alerts every time there's a new job that might fit your profile. They used to do this via email, me email messaging, um, but they found that when they sent a text message, they were getting um, better results, quicker response times, um, all that greatness that text messaging can provide. Um, another unique thing that Bandwidth does is 911. Um, we actually have our own 911 network um, in-house as well. And because, you know, Bandwidth is in this unique position of owning a network and also building APIs around it, um, we've got a, a brand new API that allows you to tap into that 911 network um, without being, you know, a 911 expert yourself. Um, so if you, you know, have an app that does need to get in touch with emergency services, um, like let's say something goes wrong and you, you know, walking home alone late at night, um, maybe you have um, someone coming to your door to give you a delivery or something like that. And as a developer, you want to offer up that experience. It's now easier than it ever has been to um, get that kind of help, that emergency services help um, in those times of need. And that's a really cool thing because, you know, with the, the boom of the information um, of things, right, the IoT space, you have all these wearables, all these applications, all these devices, and there's lots of different use cases for those um, pieces of software or platforms to want to be able to connect to emergency services. And right now, you know, it's, it's not possible um, oftentimes for a device itself to trigger the 911 call. So what that um, our emergency calling API does is sort of, it sits in between and it facilitates that um, so that the IoT space can actually start to access the 911 services via, you know, that that process within sort of the within compliance and um, sort of the the regulatory space. Yeah, that, that's an application, and in terms of the connection between what CPaaS enables and, and the Internet of Things, that's something I hadn't really thought about previously. And the, the example you made, for example, in in a care home, they have IoT devices if if someone falls on a pressure sensitive mat, but at the moment that would trigger an alarm in the care home and then they'd have to contact the emergency services. Whereas with CPAS, you can have the device itself cut out the, the, the effectively the middleman, the, the admin layer, and, and, and do that directly. 
Well, there's there's still that there's still the um, there's still the need to have that activation point of a person, but that can be facilitated through the application and through the API calling. Yeah, it, yeah. Can, it can give you context to the situation right. and certainly speed things up. Right. Um, especially in an in an emergency situation, seconds matter. Yeah. Um, so it can certainly make that process even more seamless and get you in touch with the right folks immediately. And some of the examples you were talking about before. I don't, I don't think it can be underestimated really how much they can be absolutely transformative for, for an industry. You know, if you can, and the example, and I know we, we've talked about this before in, in planning for this, for this webinar, the example that always used is maybe healthcare services or appointment services with automatic messaging for reminders for appointments because missed appointments costs, you know, th those industries huge amounts of money. Whereas with CPAS, you, you can really maximize your efficiency by just sending out reminders to through messaging or, or preferred, preferred communication channel. Absolutely. Um, there's nothing that gets attention like a text message. It's not something that you're going to leave unread on your phone. Um, we've got stats that show it gets a response in less than 90 seconds. Um, whereas with something like an email or a phone call, it's just so much easier to ignore um, and to put off and, and you know not pay attention to. Um, the power of text messaging really, really gets those eyeballs. And as consumers, we've come to expect to be notified by text for, for things like our doctor's appointments. You know, it, it really puts, uh, puts the onus on you to make sure that you're showing up. And it's something that's almost a standard um, in the healthcare industry and, and other industries are certainly starting to pick, up, pick up and take notice as well. Well, well, some of the applications that, you, that you've talked about in this webinar are really interesting. If the, the viewers want to find out more about what you're doing at Bandwidth in terms of your 911 API in the States or, or the voice and the, and the messaging applications, what's the, what's the best way for them to do that? So they can just come to our website. It's www.bandwidth. That's B A N D W I D T H dot com. We've got all sorts of information. We've even got a 100 page guide to CPAS with everything you ever wanted to know and more. So definitely tap into that. We are here for you to answer your questions. Excellent. Well, I think I'm going to go and have a look at the 100-page guide to CPAS. <laughs> I, think I, could, I could definitely brush up my knowledge. But for the meantime, both uh, Caroline and Caitlin, thanks so much for telling me a bit more about it in this webinar. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks.